hey! So, in this video I'll be giving a very basic explanation about the pillars Yakim and Boaz. The things that these pillars represent and the meanings they have and where they crop up spread so far and wide that I will probably have to do multiple videos on this. Um, there's just a million things to chat about when it comes to these but here is a good place to start. So Yakim and Boaz are probably the most famous pillars um, in all the land. They supposedly stood in the entrance of the Temple of Solomon. Um, the pillars are used in tarot, Freemasonry, um, a lot of religious uh, images and stories, but they also are still relevant in modern life. So the pillars that stood in Solomon's temple were said to be made of bronze or brass, which is a combination of sun and moon metals. The sun metals being copper and the moon metals being tin or zinc. So straight away the very material that these pillars are made out of symbolise balance as they are a mix of both sun and moon. These pillars are mostly associated with Freemasons so they are usually written off as kind of evil Illuminati symbolism um, but they actually have very relevant messages and the, rest, the messages aren't necessarily evil. They were actually around long before Freemasons were even a thing so they're not actually Masonic although I and many others do refer to them as the Masonic Pillars. So, the two pillars represent polarities. In Masonic art, the two pillars are usually depicted with a checkerboard floor in between. On either side stands the white pillar and the black pillar and the floor is checkered, which means there's equal black and white, so it almost represents a balance or a harmony of both colours on the floor. This art will also usually have a doorway or stairs or a ladder on this floor. The idea is that the checkered floor or the doorway is the middle path and the balance which you have to walk through to then be able to climb the stairs or climb the ladder, which can be seen as ascending spiritually or ascending in levels of Freemasonry. So these pillars are religious, Masonic, alchemical, but they are also really good metaphors of a lot of other aspects in our modern life. The two polarities have their standard meanings, but a lot of other meanings can be assigned to them as well. Basically, the way I see it, if you can think of something that divides you on an individual level or divides us on a societal level, you can usually break it down and apply the two sides of division onto these pillars. It all sounds a little bit weird, I put a little cheat sheet together and hopefully that will simplify it a bit. Uh, so I've got a couple examples which I shall now walk you through. Right, let's go through this. On the left we have Boaz which is usually seen as the black pillar. This is otherwise known as the pillar of mercy and the word Boaz means in his strength. In alchemy this is the moon pillar, the influence of this is feminine, it's the gentle mother and it's a negative force. Again in alchemy it's represented as the white woman or the white queen. In the chemical marriage it's mercury and as an element it's water. This is the thought pillar and in Judaism it's the god pillar. On the right is Yakim, which is usually the white pillar, it's otherwise known as the pillar of severity. The word Yakin means he shall establish. In alchemy this is the sun pillar, the influence is masculine, the stern father is a positive force. Um, in alchemy again it's represented as the red man or the red king, it's sulphur, it's fire, as opposed to thought it's practice. And in Judaism this is the pillar of Israel. In Judaism there are three pillars, there's God, Israel and Torah. Torah is the middle pillar or the middle pathway, it's basically the same thing as the checkerboard, it's the balance between the two, or yin and yang. If we look at the symbols of the elements on the two pillars, we have fire and water. Then if we combine the two in the middle, we get that balance, which is Torah. This is the worship. It's almost another way of drawing the yin yang symbol. Even in a synagogue when the rabbi reads the Torah, he reads it between the two pillars, as the Torah is sacred. As I've said before, these pillars are old symbols, but they are still relevant in our modern life. Here's some examples in architecture.
even used in different political speeches. And as I said, the Torah. So what do you do with all this information? Well, the thing is, we are humans that are blessed with free will. So to allow free will to happen, we need to have options, which means we need to have binaries. The two pillars of mercy and severity are the most relevant. But if you think about it, every single aspect of our life is in a binary. The goal is to stay on the middle path. It's all about staying in balance and in harmony. The best example I can think of why being in balance of these two polarities is so important is like raising a child. If as a parent you raise the child with too much severity, you're really strict, really disciplined, the chances are is that that child would probably be quite unhappy. On the flip side, if you raise them like on a pillar of mercy, the child might have no boundaries and be over emotional and lack discipline and control. So there really is a happy medium of the two, but it's figuring out what serves. And this works on an individual level and on a societal level. For example, in America, we have liberals and Republicans. In England, we have Labour and Conservative. You could argue that Liberal and Labour are on the merciful pillar and Conservative and Republican are on the severity pillar. Depending on your political view, neither one of them is good or bad. There's definitely good and bad in both. And the two wings do separate society, but it's like with everything, this can be Brexit versus Remain. This can be not wearing a mask versus wearing a mask. You might realise that you're on a pillar if, if there is a very obvious opposing side to the one that you're on. See how a lot of this architecture guides you to the middle. You're never gonna be able to walk through the doorway if you're tied to a pillar, you have to be in balance. What I love about these pillars is that they just apply to so much. Even in our bodies, we have our left and right brain, which are very conflicting. In the middle of these two polarities are your pineal and your pituitary gland, which is essentially your third eye. The choice of being in a middle pillar doesn't mean being passive. If you're unsure where you're supposed to be, you will be directed by your own moral compass. This takes a lot of discipline and a lot of self-care, which funnily enough is severity and mercy. The third eye also sits between our temples on either side of our head. And if you think about it, even the way we procreate is in between two pillars. This video outlines a very basic understanding of what these pillars mean, but I will be doing more videos as I go on. If you're seeking spirituality, then I would highly recommend learning about these because for me, these pillars gave me an understanding about myself and the outer world, which I definitely didn't have before. They're also a really good thing to learn if you love symbolism, love to crack symbolism. Let me know in the comments if you've spotted any others. More videos on this coming up soon. That's all I've got for you today. Bye.